Okay, the next talk up is Bringing Next to Us to My School by Mark Schmidt. And this presentation will start with the current state of the learning infrastructure running on Arch Linux and the challenges that we faced with it, ups and downsides of migrating to Next to Us and what has already been done. So I believe the school that this is about is um, school that Mark goes to EPITA, I believe it's pronounced EPITA, a French school of engineers and computer science and it is bringing Nix of us to its students. So it's going to be a presentation sort of showing the challenges of maintaining infrastructure of more than 800 machines used by students. So they started using Nix of us a year and a half ago when they were in California for a school trip. That's pretty cool. And they wanted a way to like manage config with like Git. And I know a lot of people like, just like um, Mark tried Ansible then then found NixOS, and I will say that NixOS is much better than Ansible for this kind of thing. And he is also an organizer at ProLogin, the French National Computer Science Contest. And a cool thing we share in common is that, well, I don't play the same instrument, but I am a musician, is he, played viola, he plays viola, and he's done that for 14 years now. Okay, take it away. Right, so first I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for their work. Uh, what they're doing is terrific. Um, so as you said, World of Peace, uh, I am a student at EPITA in my fourth year. I'm part of a laboratory which is um, called the CRI, which stands for Centre des Ressources Informatiques, which in English means uh, roughly uh, IT Resources uh, Center. Uh, so, we're also a school department in charge of managing the educational IT needs. Uh, what that means is anything from hosting Moodle uh, to managing the computer rooms, which is what I will be talking about today. Right, so we'll skip over that. So, uh, EPITA is still uh, a school that has computer rooms, much, much like this one. Um, this photo actually is not accurate because now we have uh, screens that stand uh, on top of the tables and not that are, aren't inside and we are using uh, Intel Nooks as our uh, uh, computers that are attached behind the screen. It's very, uh, very convenient. Um, however, the CRE does not manage everything in those computer rooms. Uh, indeed, Epita is part of a group of school. Uh, called Yonis that tries to mutualize needs, especially in IT. Um, the department respons responsible for those is called the Bocal, and they manage uh, everything from phones, Office 365 accounts, Wi-Fi, and our computer room's network. Uh, this means that we actually have some uh, imposed requirements when managing the, computer in, the computers in those. Um, our computers uh, used to not have any disk, uh, which meant that we had to boot the machines uh, via network. Uh, however, our computer rooms only have a one gig uh, uplink for each computer room. Um, and since we have 13 computer rooms uh, across six campuses in France, um, that would just kill our server room uh, uplink that's also one gigabyte if we booted all the machines at the same time. So, uh, what we are doing is basically have having a um, our initramfs that downloads uh, the rootfs using a uh, ARIA2, so BitTorrent, uh, so we don't have to actually download everything from each machine from our server room. Um, so as I said, we have 13 computer rooms. Uh, that adds up to about uh, 800 to 1,000 machines, which probably makes it the biggest IT infrastructure running Arch Linux in France, maybe Europe. Um, and to give students uh, some persistence on those machines for the files when they're working on it, we're using Kerberos uh, for authentication on uh, OpenAFS. For those who don't know what OpenAFS is, it's a basically a network file system uh, that you can log in using Kerberos, and uh, only you can see your file. It's not like in NFS, right? Um, we also actually have uh, several images that the computers can boot from. Uh, we do that because uh, depending on what what year you're in at uh, Epita, you're going to be working with different software, and we don't want to include like 
all the software you use that uh, Epitime One Im image, uh, it would just be too big. Uh, right now, our images are about two gig, two gigabytes uh, uh, size. So yeah, you know, all all the software would be way too much. Right, so currently our boot process goes as this. So the machines are configured to Pixie by default. Uh, they get their IP from uh, the switches in the computer rooms, which uh, forward DHCP requests to our servers. Um, then in this DHCP request, uh, our servers tell uh, the computers to download uh, IPixie from uh, our servers again uh, using TFTP. Um, then IPC queries a menu from a uh, homemade service that actually manages uh, IPC menus, which allows us to, uh, you know, select a uh, default image for a room depending on what uh, year, uh, what uh, promotion of student is going to be using it. Um, and then once uh, the image has been selected. Uh, IPC will then download the kernel and in its RAMFS uh, via HTTP from our S3 servers. Um, and then this in its uh, RAMFS will download a torrent file via HTTPS again. Uh, it finds what torrent file to download from the kernel command line. And then in this torrent, uh, there is a uh, rootfs squashfs, which it downloads and then it mounts it and switch routes on it. Um, if uh, the computer has a disk, so our old computers didn't have a disk, but now we have one uh, in our uh, Intel NUC, and we can actually do some boot cache. Uh, so we have a partition in which we store the torrent file and the contents of that torrent, and uh, so the, the machine doesn't have to actually re-download the image if it hasn't changed and it had downloaded it before. Also, once the machine is booted up, there's a service that uh, uh, seeds those uh, those images. So a booted up image is uh, um, capable of seeding its own image and also other any uh, any other uh, images that it would have been downloaded before. Okay, so how do we build an image? So using Arch Linux, as I said previously. Um, we use Dracut for our initRD uh, because it's uh, quite convenient, easily customizable, and it just works. Uh, we use Salt to manage uh, our configuration and uh, what packages are going to be installed on the machine or in the image. And then some custom tools, uh, including Arch Creator, which is basically a script uh, to um, uh, bootstrap a, uh, an image. So the first step is what you'll, you would do in any uh, classic Arch Linux uh, installation, that's packstrap a rootfs with some basic uh, software. Uh, the second step we do is we install salt. We actually have to pin this salt version for a very simple reason. Um, the current uh, salt version in um, uh, Arch Linux repositories is uh, broken, so we have to uh, install our own. And then we have to patch system, uh, uh, well, actually systemctl because uh, the latest version of Sol doesn't support the latest version of systemd uh, that's shipped with Arch Linux. Uh, so we actually have to um, uh, hack the output of systemctl uh, dash dash version to remove that version and replace it with a version supported by Salt. Uh, otherwise, Salt will just not start. Uh, which is what we do just right here, uh, salt call, and the important part is this, state.highState. state. Uh, what that does is salt is going to query its salt master, which then looks in a git repository on the master branch, and um, applies the configuration on your current system, which in this case is a rootfs, so we're inside a shroot right here. And then we undo our hack, we install some kernel modules, we generate our initRD using uh, Dracut, and then we create a squashFS with um, everything that we've done just here. Okay, so uh, this uh, setup actually has a few problems. First, it's not reproducible for a very simple reason. Every time we um, start a, an image build, we don't know what packages are going to be installed because, well, Arch Linux is a rolling release, so they just release packages whenever they want. Uh, so we would just you know, install what's, in, uh, what's latest in the Arch Linux repositories. Uh, we could actually um, pin all those packages to a version, 
but there would just be too much maintenance for not much result. So we just hope that every time we, we rebuild an image, everything just goes fine. Uh, salt is a uh, uh, is a pain because well because of what we've seen just before. Um, it's also very hard to test the changes we do on these images. Right now we have two ways of testing changes. The first one is to uh, push on a, uh, a branch on our salt repository, build the image. Uh, we usually have uh, an image called Arch Linux test for those um, for this purpose. So once the image is built, which takes in somewhere in between 20 to 60 minutes, we can um, actually start a machine uh, using this image, uh, downloading the image, depending on when you are, where you are in the school, how good is your connection, can take between 2 minutes to 15 minutes. So you're, you're in for about 30 to uh, an hour and 30 before you can actually test your changes. So it's very hard to iterate on any configuration uh, changes that you are doing. Um, the second way we have to test changes is actually to commit on our salt uh, repository on master because of course and then uh, go on an, an already booted up machine and run um, uh, so salt call uh, state dot high state which is going to uh, you know query the, uh, the the configuration it should have from its salt master and then apply it on the system and then we can test it, which is pretty fine, but again, pushing on master, not, not great. And you can test anything, um, in, if you make any changes to a systemd unit uh, that gets loaded on startup, you can test that, for example. Uh, CI takes forever, as I said, and we also don't have any packages cache, which is probably why the CI takes forever, um, because, well, we haven't had time to implement it, and as far as I know, it's not very much trivial. So, uh, there's a quite of a running gag in our team uh, that says, um, you know, if we switch to NixOS, uh, it's going to solve all our problems and everything's going to Live be fine. Everything is going to be fine just right after that. And um, what we, well, I actually decided to, uh, to, to go and find out. Um, so um, I mainly got inspired from the Netboots um, uh, configuration in uh, Nix packages, and then um, what I did is basically hack on it. You can find everything here. Uh, the, the 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 two things I needed to uh, add on top of the Netboots uh, configuration was uh, torrent downloading, which is basically putting ARIA2 in the in its RD, and then uh, launching the command uh, uh, here, and add boot cache support, which is basically uh, checking if a partition exists. I do right here. If it does, you mount it. If it fails, we just mount a TMPFS so the image can still uh, seed um, well the torrent file. Right, uh, you might wonder, how do I get the uh, init file? Like, uh, in a uh, standard uh, NixOS installation, you would uh, have a kernel command line argument called init that equals to something like slash nix slash tor slash a hash NixOS system slash init. Um, but uh, the thing is, to add that uh, in our current setup, I would have to have a, an API route on our uh, service that manages images uh, to upload to update this uh, this path and I just couldn't be bothered um, so I did something that's a bit of a hack and frankly not not quite satisfying uh, what I do when I'm creating my squash FS so uh, the closure info that's basically uh, everything that has to go in the image store contents is a list that contains uh, config.system.build.top level so I have that. I have to put the NixPath registration also in my SquashFS. And then, uh, you know, for uh, when the system boots up, I have to run NixTor, LoadDB, and everything is in there. And then I uh, echo, uh, so config.system.build.toplevel slash init. That's going to evaluate to something like slash nix slash tor slash hash uh, dash nixos dash system dash whatever uh, slash uh, init, which I put here. And I echo that in a stage two init file. Uh, this stage two init files uh, end up in the uh, squashfs, and then in my initrd when I uh, am done mounting everything, which means I have my nixtor mounted, 
And just right before I uh, switch to stage two, I actually export this variable, stage two init, which is the variable that's usually set when um, uh, the stage one parses the uh, kernel command line uh, arguments. Uh, if there's init, it will st um, set stage two init to whatever value is provided. And here I just uh, you know, set it to uh, what would be in uh, slash nick slash door slash stage two init, which comes from here. There's a better way of doing this, actually. Um, I would have to uh, generate a um, an, IP, uh, an IPXC script like it's like that's what's done in uh, the netboot module in uh, uh, Nix packages, which is actually the right way of doing it, and then um, upload that uh, IPXC script also to our S3 where things get downloaded from, and our service that manages images instead of um, providing a kernel and intrg to uh, to download. It should just, uh, you know, uh, chain load on that script in our S3. I have to test it, but it should work, and it probably will be a better solution than this. So let's go over the list of the problems we had before and see if we solved some. Not reproducible. Well, Nix helps a lot with that, uh, since we can uh, pin our packages, um, which is main, the main, re the main, uh, the main problem we had before. Uh, however, um, our, uh, my images are not yet fully reproducible. Uh, I noticed that when doing some tests, see to see if I could uh, just upload an image on S3, even if it wasn't, if it hadn't been uh, updated. And uh, some bits actually change between the uh, the two images I built uh, at uh, separate times. Um, I haven't had time to invis investigate it, but uh, well, the only thing it adds up is that we don't have to have the manual step of going into our GitLab UI and start the job that uh, uploads the images to the to S3, which we want to have anyway. So we just you know don't care about this. Uh, so we're pinning next packages uh, using flakes. So we are only upgrading packages when we want. Salt is no longer a pain because we are now only using it to um, actually uh, run commands on uh, several machines uh, across a computer room and not to not using it to build the system anymore. Uh, so that's better. Um, it's not uh, hard to test changes anymore because you can just run a Nix build uh, config that system that build VM and launch a VM uh, which takes about a minute, uh, which is much better than the hour it would take you before, and you can iterate on uh, hacking configuration pretty fast using uh, that method. Um, the VM is actually a bit broken right now because uh, it won't accept my netboot configuration, but I just have to override that uh, that output and uh, disable uh, the, net, the netboot, but detail. Uh, we now have a CI which only builds uh, the top level configuration and not what I call the netboot top level, which includes the SquashFS, which takes some time. Um, so the CI is pretty fast because it's only building a uh, NixOS configuration. Uh, some packages uh, does not take a very long time. It allows you to have some feedback when you push on the repository um, if your configuration is valid and builds. Um, the SquashFS uh, part of the build, which is what takes most uh, most of the time of the build, is uh, separated into another job that's launched manually, as I said before, and also uploads the uh, the images to our S3. And we also now have a cache, a binary cache um, that we that I set up in you know a few minutes, uh, so we can um, we can cache our packages and our configuration. Um, now let's go uh, over what that provides to our students because what we've seen right now uh, until until then uh, is what uh, it helps us to do. Um, but uh, let's see what what it uh, allows our students to do. First, they can reuse the configuration. For example, our Kerberos and OpenAFS configuration uh, is exported as part of a NixOS module in our Flake which means they can import it in their configuration and use it from there. Uh, so they don't have to reconfigure all the servers and everything uh, from, from their configuration. They can just use ours. And if we update it, they will uh, be updated, uh, uh, up to date with it. Um, students can also uh, install the same packages we have uh, on, at school, uh, which means they'll have the same environment as they would have uh, at school, 
which means it's also the same environment that's used between uh, in the the test when we automate uh, when we automatically test their code uh, to grade it. Um, and then uh, they can, uh, so on the computers at school, install new packages. Right now, the only way they have is to uh, download the source and compile it from there. Um, now, because Nix is multi-user, they can uh, actually uh, install packages. So what's done, the, as I said, Netboot works. Uh, Kerberos and LDAP configuration and thus OpenAFS support also works. Uh, I already have included some uh, packages needed for uh, development by the students. Uh, I think there's only Python right now. I have to add a, a bunch more, but that's for later. And the CI for the images deployment works too. What's left to do is some extensive testing, maybe via NixOS test. I've never used them before. I have to see how, how they work. Will they integrate with our workflow? And uh, that's some more work uh, left to do. I have to write some uh, introductory blog posts for the students. I already wrote one uh, explaining like from the very basics, what's a package manager, what's its role, what does it do, how does it do it uh, for a uh, classic one, and then how Nix does it. I have to do some team training because currently in our team we're only two people uh, proficient with Nix and uh, NixOS. Uh, but if you want to use that in production and uh, as a long-term uh, solution, I have to. Well, we have to train uh, uh, the whole team uh, so they get on board and then know how uh, how it works. And then uh, I have to write a small script to live update the images. So with salt, you could do uh, state.highState, state, which you can't do anymore. So I have to, uh, to find a way to uh, update the images uh, while they're running, which is pretty simple, uh, I guess. And then what's next for this project? Um, it will be on a one-year trial. So a student can test it. They can provide us with feedback. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes, and maybe we'll do a full switch to NixOS. Uh, and then the last item here is just some blue sky insanity for me. Maybe uh, I would be able to somehow share the Nix store between uh, all the machines in a in a room. Um, um, I don't know how I could do it. Maybe using IPFS. I don't know how that works. Uh, so if one student installed a package and another one uh, installed the same package. Uh, uh, they could just download it from the other uh, computer instead of downloading it, downloading it from cache.nixos.org. All right, and I guess that's all for me. If uh, there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If you let me just switch to uh, the Jitsi room. They just rebooted. Yep. Live streaming is on. Okay, everyone. Sorry about that. We had a little um slight technical difficulty with like the stream in the Jitsi room being cancelled, but we ironed that out. So this now enters into the Q and A portion of this talk, and we do have um I think three questions, two of which are actually from the speaker who's going to be speaking right up next. So first one is, have you tried to bring NixOS to the routers? Is there a plan to do so? Sorry, to the, to the router, you said? Yeah, to the routers. Oh, OK, uh, so uh, we don't have actually any plans for that. Uh, the, the only plan right now is to, uh, to use it for the, the computers used by the students. OK, gotcha. And what kind of network setup does EPTA have or runs? Uh, well, I'm not sure. What do you mean network? Like, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so, um, 
well, it's quite complicated. Basically, it's a mess. Um, we have a uh, each uh, computer room has a uh, a subnet. Uh, our server room also has a subnet. Uh, the bocal uh, I, I spoke of uh, at the beginning of my uh, of my talk uh, actually routes them uh, for us. Um, so I don't exactly know what goes on behind the scenes uh, uh, on their infrastructure uh, because I'm, I'm not working it. Uh, and then the only f network we really have to do is uh, the one our server room. So that's pretty basic. Uh, even though we have some, some weird stuff uh, going on uh, um, in, for routing between VLAN and, and all that stuff. I'm not sure that answers the question. I have my eye on the. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I have my uh, the, uh, Nixcon QA uh, uh, channel if you want to. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, yes, there is uh, isolation, uh, probably, but again, that's not what we do. Uh, that's the job of the Bocal to do that. Right, and someone just said you should not tell that to strange to say yeah, the yeah, <laughs> Okay, the next question we have is what and if there is CI, what is it and is it being used? Um, so we're using GitLab CI uh, because that what that's what was used uh, up until then. Uh, we're not really planning to uh, you know, use uh, Hercules or uh, um, Hydra because uh, well that just doesn't fit in in, in our flow uh, uh, currently. Uh, I'm not quite sure there's a uh, a a way for them to uh, you know automatically upload. Uh, but the the outputs of builds like not the path in the next door, but actually what's in it. Uh, so I don't want to you know when you next build you have a result uh, symlink. I don't want to uh, uh, upload what's behind that result symlink, but I want to upload only result slash uh, let's say nixos dash test dot nitrd and nixos dash test dot squashfs and nixos dash test dot kernel. I want to upload these three files. Uh, fully to three uh, with the same name, so I actually change my uh, my image. Uh, then. So we're not currently planning on any uh, uh, well, Nix focused CI uh, system. Right. Um, I've used Kashix for some things like that. I'm not sure if it's entirely possible to do what you're doing though. It might be worth looking into maybe um, momentarily. Okay. So I don't think I see any more questions in the channel. Right. Yep, I think that concludes the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. Yep, and everyone,